imagine you have hundreds of data entries that you then want to go through to find a pattern or make a conclusion from. There is a way to quickly analyze the data set and make automatic predictions. Use a decision tree classifier. The data that we are using today showcases the most popular genre of music for a specific age group and gender. First, we need to load in several modules. Let's load in the pandas library and call it pd. We can use this library to help us load and interact with the data. It also has many other applications in data science as well that we may explore in future videos. Let's also load in the scikit-learn package, denoted as sklearn, which is a widely used library for machine learning algorithms. Let's import the decision tree classifier class from scikit-learn as that is a basic machine learning algorithm that we will be implementing today. A decision tree classifier creates a decision tree. Each node in the tree specifies a test on an attribute. Each branch descending from that node corresponds to one of the possible values for that attribute. In this line, we are stating that from the scikit-learn library, access the module called tree, and from this module, access the class called decision tree classifier. Now let's also add the line sklearn.model selection import train test split. So from the scikit-learn library, access the model selection module and import the function train test split. Using this function, we can easily split the current data set into two separate sets. Now you may ask, why do we want to do that in the first place? The reason we want to do this is because as standard practice with many machine learning algorithms, we have one data set that we use to train the machine learning algorithm so it can learn the patterns within the data set. The other data set we can then use to test it. Since we also want to calculate the accuracy of the predictions being made by this model, let's once again import a function from scikit-learn. Let's write sklearn.metrics import accuracy score. So we are accessing the scikit-learn library again, accessing the metrics module and importing the accuracy score function. Now to read a CSV file, this part is fairly standard. Use the pandas read underscore CSV method and specify the name of the dataset, which in our case is data.csv. Today, we are using this dataset that lists the ages and genders of a sample size and their favorite music genre. Let's open the CSV file for a second. In the documentation for this open source file, it stated that these ones represent a male and the zero represents a female. For example, we can see here that perhaps men from ages 31 to 37 like classical music. Let's create an A and B subset of the data. The A data subset contains all the data from the Excel file except the genre column. As you can see from the syntax music underscore data dot drop, we are specifying in the argument section of that method that we are removing the column called genre. The B subset contains just the genre column. With this line, quote, A underscore train, a underscore test, B underscore train, B underscore test equals train test split, A, B test size 0 0.2. We can split up our data to a testing set and training set. Out of one, we can specify the test size, thus changing how much is used to test versus to train. The more the model has to train with, the more accurate the predictions will be. Generally, it is good practice to have 75 to 85% of the data to be used to train the model if the goal is to have accurate predictions. This function, train test split, returns four values. Therefore, we are storing them in these four variables. The first two variables, a train and a, st and a test, are the input sets for training and testing. The last two variables, b train and b test, are the output sets for training and testing. The test size parameter specifies how much of the data is used for testing, and the maximum it can be is one. Now with the decision tree classifier, we can store it as an object in the object name model. Then let's use this to call the method dot fit. With the dot fit method, we can train our model. Thus, for the arguments, let's train it using the train data sets as arguments. So we input a train and b train in the brackets. We can then find predictions using the dot predict method, and we will store it in the variable called predictions. When making predictions in the argument, let's put the a test values as that will be in the input for the model to then make the predictions. Remember to specifically put dot values. This is something many programmers will forget to include, but it helps you avoid a user warning that would otherwise appear in the output window that states, quote, does not have valid feature names, end quote. And the data set was, quote, was fitted with the feature name, end quote. Essentially, this just means that the model was fitted with the data in a data frame, and then only values were used to predict. Thus, including the dot values allows the program to know that you did actually mean to only predict with numerical values.
In the beginning, I also mentioned that I would show how to demonstrate the accuracy of the predictions being made. That is also really simple and can be done in a single line of code. The way this works is the program compares the b-test values with the actual predictions that were made. The syntax for this method is as follows. Accuracy score, and then in the brackets for arguments, the b-test and predictions. Thus, the accuracy score method calculates the accuracy by comparing those two sets of data as arguments. It then will calculate a numerical value out of one. Now to make this program more user friendly, I also included these three print statements to organize the data that is being displayed and give some context to it. Thus, this is how you use a decision tree classifier to make predictions from a CSV file. To reiterate how we made this program today, first we imported the appropriate packages, functions, and modules to allow us to access them. Then we read the CSV file and split the data in the file in two separate subsets called A and B, where A has the data except the genre data and B just has the genre data. A is the input data and B is the output data. We use a train test split function to further split the data in, into a training set and testing set, respectively for the A and B data sets. The more data we designate to testing, the less accurate the predictions will be because less data will be used to train the machine learning model. We then train the model using the training values. Afterwards, we use the testing input values to make predictions. We finally calculate the accuracy of those predictions to what they are supposed to be by comparing them to the B-test values. Thank you for watching and have a great day.